thoughts. And last week on the 20th, we talked about the battle of the mind. And, we, and Satan has a, has a basketball, uh, has a football field. Uh, at least he tries to have a football field. That's the four inches between our ears. And that's where he wants to destroy us. And we got to fight for our mind. We got to fight, fight, fight. Everybody say fight, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. To win the battle of our mind. Win the battle of our mind. Oh, you have to say that part. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk about renewing the mind. Renewing the mind. Now you can repeat that. Renewing the mind. Renewing the mind. This is something that, that, that uh, has to be done. Now the Bible tells us that um, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now you got to think about a couple of things. Uh, Paul is talking to Christians. Now, think about that. It's important. He's talking to Christians. He's talking to people who have already had a change of heart. God has already cleansed them in terms of salvation. Now he's saying, now God doesn't only want your heart, he wants your mind. Okay, now God has our heart, doesn't he? We have a heart that we want to follow Christ. We have a heart that we want to do the right things. Now he wants our mind so that we will follow Christ and we will do the right things. So Satan wants our mind. He fought hard to, get, to stop us from getting saved, didn't he? How many of you, he fought hard? And it was something that he kept telling you, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't. But you broke through it, and you accepted Christ. How many accepted Christ already? Thank you. Okay, about half of us accepted Christ. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're almost there. Uh, we're almost there. But uh, now he wants to... Not only, he can't stop us from being saved, but he wants to stop living as if we're saved. And so that's why the Bible says we need to renew our mind so that we can live the way that we are. Live the way that we are. How many of you want a renewed mind? Yeah. You're already saved. That's not a question. We're not talking about your heart. We're talking about your head now. Everybody touch your, get, well don't touch your neighbor here, touch your head. <laughs> touch your head. We're not talking about your heart. You've already given your heart to Christ, haven't you? Amen. Now you got to give your head to Christ. Amen. You've already come out the cocoon. I see, you, I see your wings. <laughs> and they're flapping. <laughs> you're out the cocoon. You are flying. You flew last night, didn't you? You are flying. Now God wants you to fly like him. So he wants your head now. He has your heart. He wants your head. And that's what renewing the mind is. Giving God your head. He has your heart. God knows I love him. How many of you love the Lord? Yeah. God knows you love him. Yeah. Now he wants you to behave as you, as you love him. Yeah. That's right. and, and that's difficult sometimes because we have some crazy thoughts. Yeah. And these thoughts sometimes control our decisions. And these decisions control our actions. These actions control our character. This character controls our destiny. And we end up messed up because we're not thinking right. Yeah. And it happens all the time. And we have to pray about that, don't we? And so renewing the mind is where we want to get to today. And the Bible tells us that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, it says and that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So Christians, our minds need to be renewed every day. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. So uh, the result of being conformed to this age is not a, a renewed mind, but a depraved mind. So we're conformed to this world. We have a depraved mind, and those things that conform to this world is unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossip, slanders, hatred of God, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, dis disobedient to parents without understanding. And so these are people who conform to this world. God doesn't want us to conform to the world. He wants to be transformed. <clears throat> now, transform. Not talking about salvation here. I want to make this clear. He's not, he's not talking about trying to get you saved. Now, he does want you saved. If you're unsaved, yes, he wants you to give Christ your heart. So we're going to stop for a minute. If you haven't given Christ your heart, just stop for a minute. And we're going to ask God, God, take my heart now. If you have never said, Jesus, come into my heart today. Come into my heart to stay. You can give your heart to Christ right where you are. Right now. 
right now, if you confess in your heart uh, uh, that he that Jesus was was raised from the dead, uh, thou shalt be saved. And you can receive him right now in your heart. And we have done that. Now we want God to renew our mind, and that's that's the struggle sometimes because. God does them both. Sometimes we think we can't save ourselves and we can't renew our minds either. So, <clears throat> so we have uh, the first, uh, our first thing that we think about in terms of renewing the mind. It says the opposite of being conformed to the world is being transformed. Everybody see that under, under uh, letter A? The opposite of being conformed is to this world is to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, the battleground between evil conformity and a good transformation is within the mind of the believer. Note now, those of you English teachers, note that the passive voice, the passive voice, that is, when you're passive, you don't do anything. We talk about someone who's passive. They're, they're, they're just that, that passive behavior or, or passive aggressive behavior. They hit you, but they don't swing. You ever, anybody ever hit you and didn't take a swing at you? Yeah. Aggressive behavior, pow! A, a, a passive behavior, pow! You've been hit, but you, they didn't swing at you. They hit you with their passivity. And so, passive behavior is when you, when you don't do anything, someone else does it for you. So then, transform is passive force, which indicates that this process of, of being re, uh, performed by an outside force. You cannot be renewed by yourself. You don't have the capability, I don't have the capability within me to renew me. It has to be done by an outside force. And that outside force has to be God. I mean, I used to, when I was a counselor and we do a Rogerian counselor or, 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 or sometimes the fraud type, soup ego, ego, and, and, and uh, the id. And you say, just sit on the couch and, and just, you have the answer within you. You know, you don't have the answer within you. If you did, we would change ourselves. Only God has the answer. So then, first of all, if you've got to be renewed, it has to come from the outside. You can't sit here and count to ten and I'm going to change my mind. You don't have, we don't have the power within to do that, but God does. Sometimes I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. 